Hey guys, I just want to take a minute to give you some brief distinctions between terrorism and racism. In fact, I was asked to do this by my dear friend, Penny Neff, um, and I decided maybe the easiest way to do it and perhaps the most engaging way to do it was to write or to produce a little video. You probably don't want to read a 50-page dissertation on this topic is what I'm saying. But if you don't recognize anything about me, my name is Jeff Struker. I spent many years in the United States Army. I took part in many combat operations, the invasion of Panama, Desert Storm in 91, Somalia in 1993, and then almost 15 different tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. I tell you that because I think I can speak with a little bit of experience, got a little bit of personal experience dealing with terrorism. And then after retiring from the Army in 2011, I became a pastor in the Deep South. And what I started to experience with my eyes for the first time in my life, though I lived in the South for almost my entire Army career, what I experienced after taking the uniform off and getting connected with people that were born and raised and for many generations, this is all they've known, was some pretty systemic racism. So now let me at the just broadest terms describe the difference for you between terrorism and racism. And then I want you to see where there may be just a little bit of overlap here. Because terrorism at its very essence is people using force to get their way. But a really important aspect of terrorism is using force against innocent people, against unarmed people, against people that can't defend themselves to get their way. If you think about it, it's almost what a three-year-old does, right? When they throw a tantrum and they're on the ground and they're pulling their hair and they're screaming and they're banging their fists and their feet on the ground and they're throwing a fit to get mom or dad to give in and to give them something that they want. Well, terrorists are basically grown men and women who are acting like little babies to try to get what they want, except for instead of throwing themselves on the ground and pulling their hair and screaming and banging their hands and fit, their fists and feet, they pull the hair or they beat somebody else up to get their way. Terrorism has literally been around ever since sin first entered human history many thousands of years ago. And terrorism is a distortion of the human heart. It's at its essence wickedness that says, I want my way so bad that I will hurt people to get it. And at least when kings go off to war and fight against one another, they send soldiers that are well armed and well trained to fight against one another. In the case of terrorism, they at the essence say, I want my way and I want it so bad that I'm going to hurt people to get it. And the people that I'm going to hurt are the most weak, the most vulnerable, the ones that can't protect themselves. That's why I believe terrorism is a crime against humanity. That's why I believe every country in the world must make a stand against terrorism. Because at its essence, terrorism is an assault against all of us when it's a, an assault against the people that can't protect themselves by armed thugs to get their way. Racism? Well, I guess I should distinguish between the word racist and racism because Racist is a person that has some superiority, some um, wickedness or distortion in their heart, a lot like a terrorist, and they believe they're better than others because of the color of their skin or because of culture or because of a language. There's 50 other ways that people can put racial... Um, use race as a weapon. But that's a racist. Racism is where a system is built to keep people 
in their place to keep people um, from being able to reach another, the next level, to prevent people in mass as a whole from being able to move beyond the status that they've always been uh, left to in society. Racism exists in the class or the caste system in several countries around the world where you're born into a certain caste and your birthplace sets you in that caste for life and no one and nothing, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how awesome or how awful, nothing can move you in or out of that caste system. There is almost a caste system in our country. And it really has to do with the color of your skin. And though there are opportunities today that many people 50 or 100 years ago never had, there is also this persistent system that doesn't afford the same opportunities to somebody with darker skin that a person like me with lighter skin gets. I'm not talking about whether or not they get whether or not you get accepted into a college by the color of your skin. I'm not talking about whether or not you get accepted uh, a job by the color of your skin. A lot of those things are now law and you would go to jail for violating those things. By the way, they had to become law because there was a system where people were using color of skin to make sure that somebody didn't leave their place in society, get out of their caste. I'm talking specifically about the hate or about the, um, the struggle in their own heart against somebody from a different culture, different color of skin. And as a result, they never really welcome them into their place in society. They never allow somebody with a different culture or a different color of skin to have all of the benefits and are afforded all of the opportunities that you or I have been afforded. It's really hard for folks that have never had that placed on them to understand what it would be like when somebody looks at you and they don't recognize who you are on the inside, all they notice about you is the color of your skin. That's also why 50, more than 50 years ago, Dr. King, when he was giving his famous I Have a Dream speech, said he dreams of the day where his little black children, black boys and black girls, will be judged by the content of their character not the color of their skin. And I think most of us, if we were really honest, we would be able to say two things about racism in the United States. We would be able to say, we've come a long way in 2020. We're a lot farther as a country than where we were in the 1940s or where we were in the 1860s that there's not a whole lot of Ku Klux Klan riding around on horses, burning crosses, although those morons still exist and still um, protest and still march in our country. That's one thing that we would have to say. The second thing, I think if we were really honest, that we would have to say is, although we've come a long way, we still have a long way to go. And what happened with George Floyd, what happened to Breonna Taylor, what happened to Ahmaud Arbery, and not just what happened to them personally, I believe because of the color of their skin, but how easy it was for the system to dismiss what happened to them and treat it almost like it's no big deal until people started to stand up and to protest, until those things happened we would have to say we do still live in a society where these terrible things can happen. And it's treated differently if it happens to a black man or a white woman than if it happens to a white man or a white woman. Yeah, we've come a long way, but we've also got a long way to go. And I'm, I, I hope that this has been a bit educational for you because at the human heart level, you have to ask, how different is terrorism in the heart of a terrorist 
and racism in the heart of a racist when Jesus says anybody who looks on his brother with hate is already guilty of murder. Just like anybody who's looked on a woman with lust is already guilty of adultery. If that's the standard that Jesus holds people to, all of us, myself included, would have to admit my heart has a long way to go. Maybe there is some terrorism uh, left over in my heart and I need supernatural help. I need the living, the, the power of the gospel and the living God to clear out that those remaining uh, problems in my heart until I can look at another brother or sister with a different color of skin and feel like we are one in Christ. Just a sh short video to give you my take on the difference between terrorism and racism. Thank you, Penny Knapp, for asking this question. Hope you're doing well. God bless you guys.